What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove Homestead and I am not at Piney Grove today. I am out on our recreational property putting in our last food plot. All right guys, look what I found here. My good buddy Aaron, he was in a previous video. He came out and helped me all day long put in my food plots when his were already in. But he was bow hunting this morning. So what, what'd you see this morning, anything? Vultures and some wind, that was about it. I had one buck kind of grunting in the woods coming towards me and about 30 yards in the dark and then never heard it again, never saw it. So um, kind of an empty day, empty morning, nothing going on. Well, we're gonna go walk this plot and look for some clover. So Brad and I are trying to figure out what to do with this plot, where to plant and where maybe to leave it because there's still um, good nutrients from previous years and, and we're coming up kind of to what we call the center of the plot. And, and there's a good amount of clover. Now granted, it's low to the ground and, and, and a little bit stubbly, but the deer have really been chewing on it. So this is a good example of something we may just leave alone, this section, because it, it seems to be doing okay on its own. Now we're gonna head back to, it would be the, towards the north end of the plot and do an assessment there on what do we want to plant and where. All right, so Aaron said the north end of the plot. This is a three acre plot, but it's not square. And at the north end behind me over my right shoulder, we have what's called a bowl. And the hunting condo is over this shoulder here. So it's about a 150 or 160 yard shot to the back of that bowl. Yeah, and again, now we're on kind of the north end, the northwest corner of the plot, the place we call the bowl, doing an assessment here. And along this edge, there's some good clover and I don't know exactly why, maybe it's because it's, it's um, shaded a little bit more and it doesn't get so much sun all summer. So maybe that's why the clover's doing really good here. Another thing that's been attracting the deer to this, this part of the plot is specifically this, this oak tree had a lot of acorn this year and you, you can see on the ground, they have just worn it down to nothing. I think they've pretty much run its course, but within the last month, um, there was deer here all the time. So here in North Florida, we largely have pine trees because our soil is so bad, you don't get a lot of hardwoods, especially here on the coast. So whenever we see an oak tree, we try to daylight it. We try to clean up around it and we'll even throw a little fertilizer under it to try and get it to, to accelerate its growth. But when the oak trees start dropping acorns, forget about anything else. A deer is going for acorns over corn, over clover, over rye, wheat. A deer loves acorn. So yesterday I only had five gallon buckets, but Aaron has these big, I don't know, a whole bunch of gallon buckets and we're gonna mix the three types of seed in there before we put it in the spreader because my spreader for some reason will bind up with the oat seed and the oats have this big hole on it. So I'll show you up close what I'm talking about. Here's the difference in Aaron's hand. We have oats on the left and we have rye on the right. And then if we look at my hand, that golden color is the wheat. And by mixing it together, those oats don't bind up and the rye and the wheat tend to lubricate it as it goes through the guide at the bottom of the spreader so that it spreads evenly. Yesterday he was spreading and he was like, you know, wondering why it wasn't spreading quickly. And it's because there's two holes in the bottom of the spreader and one of them was completely cogged with oats. Those are the holes in the bottom of the spreader and I'll open them up. And when you open them up right there, you can see that's fully open. And stick right there, you can see this, um, this one there, I had to stick my finger in there and clean out the oats because that one was completely stopped up. Aaron told me a minute ago, he said, there's no way I could do all that camera stuff. He's a get her done type of guy and the camera definitely slows you down. Some rye and some wheat. I was just thinking that I hadn't had a regen in a while and I looked down and my regen lights on, but it's not a parked regen so we can keep working. So I caught a little audible here. I'm gonna put Aaron on the tractor. He hasn't had any diesel therapy in a couple of days and I'm gonna ride the ATV. ATV's a little bumpy and uh, we're getting old. So I'm gonna give his hip and his butt a break.
just a little bit left and we're done with the 2022 food plotting season. Just that strip right there. All right, guys, that's a wrap. We are closing out the 2022 food plotting season. We knocked out those three acres in just a couple hours. It tilled up really, really good. And we're looking forward to good germination and high deer usage. Actually, this plot last night when we were here had five deer in it just eating on the clover that was left over. I've got to load up the ATV and the tractor and get them back to Piney Grove. So in the future, you're going to be seeing more tractor videos on Piney Grove instead of out here on the recreational property. But there will be upcoming videos. I'll probably take you along on some deer hunts, but we won't have any kill shots because number one, YouTube doesn't like it. And number two, Mrs. Piney Grove gets sad when she sees them. So we're not gonna do that to her. So we'll bring you along on a few hunts this year and you can watch these pots grow. So if you like today's video, please click the like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and share with your friends. Subscribing and liking really helps grow our channel and we would appreciate that. But otherwise, that's all I've got. Remember, life is short. And friends don't let friends hunt over ugly food pots. <laughs>